What it do? We are back for a Monday edition of Locked on ACC, and it is hoops talk all day. We're going to talk about every team from the men's side, touch a little bit on the women's hoops of things, and more importantly, have uh, the tracks been gotten back on for UNC? Florida State finally picks up a win, but it is this come-from-behind victory that Miami is showing us. They might just be the best team when it comes to hoops for the men's ACC. Let's talk about it on today's show. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Locked On ACC. I'm your host, Candace Cooper, joined by Kenton Gibbs of Locked On Wolfpack. Each and every day, you can find us wherever you listen to podcasts, as well as our YouTube channels. We're on the road to 1,000. We are almost there slowly but surely, so please subscribe to the channel and help assist us out. Kenton, how's the weekend? How you feeling? Everything is everything. I, I really and truly can't complain. Um, you know, it was... It was a great weekend spent with some great people uh, and doing some hard manual labor, which I told myself I wasn't going to do anymore. But here I am getting my hands dirty in the name of the Lord. But that's another story for another time. Everything is everything. I can't complain. How was yours? Pretty good. Pretty good. A lot of relaxation and hoops watching and some Army Navy game, which is always exciting. The Navy, who just let their coach go from a football standpoint. It's just a wild time. Even the government people can lose their jobs in the football landscape. Who knew? But if you're looking for a job, just like my boy from the Navy, I strongly encourage you to hit up LinkedIn Jobs. It helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster and for free. Post your job right now at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. Terms and conditions do apply. So, Kenton, we got to talk through this men's hoops thing, right? Because there are some teams that are looking good. There's some teams that are looking shaky. There's some teams that were just like, help us Jesus, right? There's always there's always a good, good, bad, and ugly like we used to do for football season, but we are, you know, st- slowly getting to our themes for basketball. But today, we're just going to go around the horn. We're going to talk about each game, and we're going to decipher little storylines that are coming from it. So, are you ready? I'm absolutely ready. Let's get into it, because there's if there was an ugly, it would be these Atlantic teams down the stretch, because, boy, they wilted like a flower out of water. But let's go ahead and get into it. Yes. All right. So Florida State took on Louisville. Louisville looking for its first win of the season. And let me tell you, it ain't find it on Saturday. The Florida State Seminoles were able to pick off the Cardinals 75 to 53. And it's an 0 and 9 start, which is easily the worst start for the Louisville Cardinals ever. Mm -hmm. Coach Payne was seen on the sidelines laughing it up with some of his players, basically trying to explain some things that people were getting upset. Like, why aren't you more, you know, upset and getting your, getting the feelings harder on these boys about, you know, such a terrible loss. You're down 13 points. And even Donovan Mitchell had to step in on Twitter and be like, guys, every team, every person doesn't respond to yelling. Everyone doesn't respond to hard nose coaching. And maybe he's trying to pour into these guys and say, Hey, I'm laughing because I'm laughing to keep from crying. I'm sick of these mistakes. I'm sick of the silliness. And it just seems like maybe this is going to be one of the years that you're having the ramifications of Coach Mack and the boys, and you're just trying to save face and figure out how to get all the pieces in place for next season. Can we already throw away Louisville's season? Throw it away? It, <laughs> is it not already in the trash? Okay, I'm I just I just want to know. Listen, I'm I'm going to say this, okay? Yeah. 0-9 for not only a Power 5 program, mm-hmm. but for a Louisville program as storied as they are on the court. As storied as they are in that Yum Center, as storied as they are to start off without a single win, that's tough. Yeah, there's no way around that. There's no easy way to talk about this situation. What I will say is this leadership looks different for everybody. Sure. When I played, I was a captain on multiple teams I played on, and not once was I the leader who would cuss the the guys up and down all up and down the field i wasn't the guy who would smack guys on the helmet if they made a mistake that wasn't the way that my leadership style was now a guy that i played with who's now the offensive line coach at cast that david dawson he was that guy you know what i mean and, and it, are either one of us wrong were either one of us wrong in our leadership style no we just had different leadership styles 
Coach Payne laughing it up with the players or whatever the case it may be. This is a case of where when you're losing, everything is wrong, right? Yeah. When you're losing, your girlfriend nails are ugly. The food don't taste as good. The flight got more turbulence. The luggage is handled too roughly. The, the beds ain't as comfortable. At the end of the day, if this Louisville team was 8-1 and one, and this was their first loss, you think anybody would care? If this team was undefeated, if they were up, 15 points. Do you think anybody would care? No. But when you are losing, everything all of a sudden becomes where you're wearing the wrong suit. Your tie is the wrong color. You didn't shave your head close enough. You got a two clipper when you should have got a one. Everything when you're losing goes goes bad. And again, there is a very legitimate conversation to be had about an 0 and 9 start is nuts. That is just, that is mind boggling a little bit. But this specific moment, mountain out of a molehill. Yeah, I agree. And I think that ultimately, you know, pain is going to need more time. But if you don't get it together, I mean, below 500, we're just, we're just asking you to get at sea level. But if you can't do that, at least let it them be tough games, tough losses, and make it competitive to so show some promise and that things are going to be changing. So, you know, time to go. But on the flip side of that, Florida State picking up only its second win of the season. They only have but so many. Count them on your hands and maybe a couple pinky toes scholarship players on that floor and that's what they're going to have to deal with all season i think it's going to be a long one for hamilton and the boys oh 100 100 um with all due respect i really can't this this florida state team <laughs> how do i put this <laughs> i you know because i did i don't want to say it but i kind of got to say it okay this this is going to be a tough year for for the black head coaches in men's basketball this is going to be a tough year I mean, you know, it's. I mean, between him, between Payne, between yeah. Uber Davis, between yeah. Earl Grant, it's yeah, gonna be, it's gonna be a long road. I mean, a I, long road. The, the 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 only guy that I'm looking at and saying, hey, you might be outperforming what you're supposed to be, or even maybe not even outperforming, just kind of being what you're supposed to be is uh, Larry Capel up there at Pitt. That's yeah. or Jeff Capel, Jeff Capel <laughs> up there at Pitt. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. It. Everybody else, oh, it's looking tough. <laughs> oh, it, it's going to be a tough year, guys. I'm sorry to tell you. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and at the end of the day, um, it's it's unfortunate that it, it shook out that way for them. But most of those coaches are in positions where they're going to get some grace, right? Like most of you co- – now, Louisville, I don't know. <laughs> uh, big time. You got to win a ball game now. And for gotta, Hamilton's sake, it might be that retirement clock a little bit louder. I was, I was about to say, Hamilton has earned the right. He he leaves when he's done. He yeah. leaves when he's done. Because who was talking about Florida State basketball before him? Who? Fair. Where? When? Yeah. Okay? So he deserve, he's earned the right. When he wants to go, he can go. Um, but with that being said, and this, this is just – you're going to have a tough time selling me – on um on these situations. And I'm mad that you left out Keats because he's another one that boy, that clock. He just you ain't signed got an extension. Home. I don't have to mention him. You he has an you extension. Ain't, you ain't got to go home, Kevin. Oh, okay. I listen, I'm gonna tell you this much. All okay. these coaches keep getting extensions because they the, the teams are afraid they're gonna leave and go elsewhere. How many of these coaches actually live out their entire extension? So you think yeah. he's not gonna live through this year? I'll tell you this. I think I'll, he's Teflon, honestly, at this I'll, point. Convince I'll, me otherwise. I'll tell you that. I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> Wolfpack Nation has, in my entire time of, of being a part of and covering Wolfpack Nation, which is only about a decade now. I'm not, Let me not lie and say, hey, I've got 30 years. In the, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I have never seen people more apathetic about Wolfpack basketball. And when I ask people, has there been a period where folks have been at this way towards Wolfpack basketball, everybody's like, "No, this is new." They this lied. New. Have y'all but, were y'all were not there for the Sydney years then? But that, that now, what I was told was even during Sydney, they cared when he was losing. They cared. They were upset when he was losing. It's like yeah, with they Keats, cared that he was in them Suge Knight suits, but that's about it. It's like when with, with Keats, everybody's just like, Meh. Well, I mean, who do they, I mean, but who do you have from a roster standpoint that you even get excited about right now? Hold on. 
Hold on. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that, but we're not there yet. Okay. This is not locked on Wolfpack. Relax. Anyway, yeah. all I said that to say is Hamilton is on retirement watch for yeah, sure. Absolutely. And, and that's absolutely. what we can go from there. We got to go through the rest of these games here and all the storylines that come from it. But first, I want to remind you guys again if you have not yet gotten to LinkedIn, you are doing yourself a disservice these days. Every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. If you're looking to post some jobs, and get your business flowing. I strongly encourage you to go to linkedin.com slash locked on college. You can use the hashtag hiring purple frame to let people know that you're hiring simple tools like screening questions, make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college terms and conditions do apply. So we're rocking and rolling with Kenton Gibbs here of Locked On Wolfpack Podcast. We're talking about the ACC men's hoops over the weekend. Saturday had a full slate of matchups. Georgetown faced off against Syracuse. Syracuse handling business, taking it 83-64, to now on a 6-4 type of season. Thus far, Jesse Edwards is the player, one of the players to watch here in the ACC. As you're looking about your all-ACC teams, he had a smooth 20. But he had, you know, the past couple of years been dealing with injuries, just figuring out his way, and, you know, growing into his body and all the things. But I certainly think that he is going to be one to help Syracuse propel them and put them on the fringe or even bubble kind of conversation. We're talking about who's going to make that tournament towards the end of the year. You know, when I when I talked about Pitt and saying that Capel was, you know, not in a, a bad spot, he and, and Jim Beheim are kind of doing the same thing right now in terms <laughs> of you don't know which team is going to show up. You don't yeah. know if yeah. you've got – a Syracuse team that's going to be, you know, doing their best, firing on all cylinders, bringing the energy, the intensity, the effort, deflecting balls and getting hands in in faces in that in that uh, patented two, three zone. And you don't know which version of them you're going to get. And so with that being said, this is a good win over Georgetown. This is a good win over uh, uh, blowing out Oakland. This is a good win sneaking by Notre Dame. But if you look at their last loss, it came by 29. If you look at the game before that, you lose to, to Bryant. For Christ's sake! If you look at the game before that, you lose. You're on a losing streak at this point. So you, there is, um, there is this Syracuse team. I'm gonna tell you this. Some people uh, thought coming in, they said, "Hey, nobody Bayham is gonna spell trouble for this team, <laughs> and um, they're gonna need to to come up with some solutions very quickly." I don't think they found them quite yet. Um, but with that being said, don't let this team get hot around tournament time because we know how Bayham like to do. We know he liked it. That team, they they take on the coach's personality. They kind of get going at their own pace. They always start off slow, always start off, eh, man, you know what? And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the year, you're looking up like, wait, we said Syracuse was dead in the water. Well, how did they just roll off five, six, seven straight conference wins? And then conference tournament time coming, all of a sudden they unbeatable. So, yeah. you know, we'll see. But right now they're they're in that zone where it's like, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you don't know what Syracuse team is going to show up for me. Well, speaking of that, we're transitioning to the next game we want to talk about here, Miami and NC State. Jordan Miller and Isaiah Wong combined for 47 points to give the victory for the Hurricanes. And they are the hottest team right now to me in the ACC, sitting at 10-1. and one. While an NC State team, while you're sitting here saying you're complaining about them, they're 8-3. and three And a lot, everybody, can't, everybody ain't able in this ACC men's basketball spectrum. So I would say, you know, three losses is not something to be super sad about. I think there are opportunities, of course, for growth. But the Hurricanes, you got to tip your hat to them and how well they've been playing. I think that speaks to Larry Nagan and how consistent he has been. And honestly, probably one of the more underrated coaches here in college basketball. You know, I'll, I'll say this. I look at this team. I see what – I see this Miami team as a team that believes they're going to win every time they take the court, number mm -hmm. one. Number two, I look at this NC State team and I see the same problems that have persisted over Kevin Keats' time by and large, right? Like I understand losing your best rim protector uh, and big and in, in Meritage getting hurt. I understand that that hurts your defense a lot. And DJ Burns is not that same type of rim protector, although he has the silky touch, all the post moves, he's not that same guy. Mm -hmm. But man, you need to be able to put up something. You need to be able to do something. You need to be able to stay in front of those uh, opposing guard somehow. As exciting as everybody talks about Jarkel Joyner and Taquavian Smith are, if they cannot get stops, your basketball team cannot be like euphoria and that everybody's getting a high when you see them. That can't be it. That can't be it. So with that being said, again, shout out to Miami's backcourt. Wong has been the man for a minute, okay? He has been – I every time he comes back and doesn't go to the draft, I'm a little surprised. 
but he has been the man for a minute and he showed it again. He showed why coming into the season, people were looking at him as a potential ACC player of the year because of games like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a hundred percent agree. And I think that, you know, they're, they're going to continue rolling and Isaiah is going to continue, you know, telling us why he's one of the best here in our conference. Moving on to the holiday hoops, giving where we saw Wake Forest take on LSU in the quadruple header that happened on Saturday. And listen, I love the Deacons. I turned it on and I was in the gym. I was like, all right, Deacons, Demon Deacons flowing. Like we got it going. We, we up by like 15 at one point, 20. Like we, we, we making sure we put the hammer on it. Now, Justice Hill, game-winning basket for the Tigers. It's hard when you piss off close close games, when you piss it away. It's That's that's tough because you absolutely have the talent and you have the resources and all the things to be successful, and you just let it you know, go by the wayside. Did they get too comfortable? It's hard to say. But this is the same thing I was saying about NC State. You have to win games when you get up by that much. You have to. NC yeah. State had a 21-point lead at one point in time. They had – Wake Forest had a what, 25? What was it, 20? Mm-hmm. You cannot lose that ball game. You cannot lose it. You cannot lose. And this Wake Forest team, I'm going to tell you this. We all know that they were snubbed for the tournament last year. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's not right. They deserve to be in, I believe. They deserve to be in the tournament last year. Yeah. But with that being said, if, you keep, if you keep this up this year, baby, it, it ain't going to be no bubble. It ain't going to be no, oh, yeah, this team is right there. You cannot lose a game like this when you have this type of lead. You can't do it. Yeah, you're gonna be looking mighty fine in that NIT, and that's that's a for sure. You're right on NIT. I don't know if you're gonna make that if you lose a game <laughs> like this. You, you you're gonna have to play the buy buy in one. Oh lord, you, that. you go. What you what you're gonna play is my kids are going home early. <laughs> what you're gonna play? Cabo on three. One, two, three. Cabo. That's what you're gonna be playing. The Cabo Invitational. Uh, some other key games to mention here, also in the holiday hoops giving, was Loyola Chicago and Clemson. The Clemson Tigers weren't able to pull one off, not even close, 76 to 58 loss. And, like, you know, Clemson's just in the middle of the pack to me always when it comes to ACC play. But they have good enough to where they could beat you. Sometimes they do, and then sometimes they just, you know, they let that thing rock. So that's how I feel about the Clemson Tigers from a basketball standpoint. You know, it's still football season down there in South Carolina. They're not really – They're not really I mean, dialed in yet. They ain't really – I mean, they ain't worried about that right now, yes. okay? They ain't worried about that. They got – what the – are they in the Cheez-Its Bowl? What what bowl are they in? Are they – Are they in the Orange Bowl? Oh, they're in the Orange Bowl. I'm sorry. They're the champs. You're right. They're in the Orange Bowl. <laughs> I, I can't remember who's in the Cheez-Its Bowl. It's one of the ranked teams in the ACC. Florida got, State. Florida State the, in the um, Cheez-Its Bowl. They got mm-hmm, the Orange Bowl. Mm-hmm. Very correct. They're worried about the Orange Bowl. They're worried about that New Year Six Bowl right now, okay? <laughs> Yes, I know the basketball team is not worried about the bowl game, people. I know that. I'm joking. But, yeah, <laughs> they, they ain't really turned it on for basketball yet in Clemson. I honestly love when I know something about football over you. That, like, just makes my day because it's very it's very rare. You're literally football brilliant. So. I, you know, I, I do the best I can. But, you know, my my 17 years of football ain't great for the memory. It ain't great for the brain. You know what I mean? I, they, they came out with a movie about it not too long ago, but I digress. A couple of other games I want to mention before we get into some bigger storylines. Boston College was beat by Villanova 77 to 56 in the Never Forget Tribute Classic. It's definitely a game that they want to forget. Coach Grant is doing the best he can with what he got. And that's what I'll say about it. You know, I, I'm going to tell you this Boston <laughs> College got those coaches. When you hear from them, you love it. Yeah. You want to run through a brick wall for them. That's, you see that's them, true. You hear from them, and you like, all it, you like, oh man, this is this is the guy. He's going to get me going. And then all of a sudden, that that pesky little thing called the actual game comes around, and uh, it gets a little scary. It gets a little different. And it, it's, you know, it's, I, I'll tell you this um, the, the bar for what is success at Boston College ain't too high, but Coach Grant still need to do something to get there. 100% agree. All right, last game I want to touch here before we talk about some Simply Safe is Pitt and Sacred Heart. Pitt, like you said, Coach Capel, he doing what he needed to do. 91-66 to 66 victory. You're beating the teams you're supposed to be 7-4. and four. Like, you really can't complain. You're, you're, you're doing enough, right? Again, that, that is a team that you don't know what you're going to get and don't expect this team to be great. Don't expect that. If you're not expecting this team to be great, if you're not expecting this team to be one of the top teams in the conference – You'll be all right. Now, once you start lying to yourself, telling you, oh, yeah, there's going to be one of the baddest things. Oh, yeah, Cable got that Duke energy rolling. We're going to have that. 
Yeah, okay. Speaking right. of which, we have a couple teams that I want to talk about energies and how it's a little off. That's such a great segue you have there, Ken. That's why they pay you the top dollar. But at Locked on ACC, we believe each home should be where you and your family feel safest, especially over the holidays. This season, give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering Locked on ACC listeners 40% off new security systems, but don't put this off when you just want to feel in the comfort of your home like everything is good to go simply safe was named the best home security system of 2022 by u.s news and world report for a third year in a row don't miss your chance to save big on my favorite security system get 40 percent off any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college today that's simplysafe.com slash locked on college because there is no safe like simply safe Kenton Gibbs here, Locked On Wolfpack podcast, talking about the Monday games or the weekend games for the ACC from the men's side of things. And two storylines want to hit. North Carolina picked up their first ACC win on the season. They got back on track. They beat Georgia Tech 75 to 59. You saw Baycott back in after a one game absence. You felt like the flow was there together. He had 13 rebounds, and it just it seemed as if Carolina got punched in the mouth enough to where they're like, this is not who we want to be. We're going to figure it out. Even if they don't end up being the number one team, get the national championship at the core, there's just some games that if you're not even competitive in or you're getting smacked around, I'm wondering there has to be some internal things going on. So it was nice to see them figure that out. You know, at the end of the day, I I think that people really got it confused because of a really good run at the end of last season. A lot of people forgot this was a bubble team going into the tournament. This was not a team that people looked at and said, hey, this is they the guys. You you know, you can't. I'll tell you what. Nobody makes a better decision with that ball than Caleb Love. I have never once heard that. And I if you look never. at their tournament performances, they got by the, that Baylor game. Bro, come on. Nobody. And again, anybody. And that again, was that a was, crazy one. That was a, that was a good Baylor team that they beat. Hey, listen, more credit to the guys. But the reality is. People took a five, six game sample size, which is this is one which of the in the NCAA tournament in March Madness. It's just... And that's what I was just about to say. This is a this is one of the worst things that you can possibly do. You get the end of the season sample size. You get the oh man, they they the ACC tournament. They look great, didn't they? Yeah. Oh man, they they beat up on everybody till they met Virginia Tech, but they probably didn't care. They felt like they secured their spot in the tournament. They didn't care anymore. And then they go into the tournament, and win a few ball games. All of a sudden, oh, man, this is a star-studded cast like nobody's ever seen before. There's a reason Baycott didn't go to the NBA. There's a reason. It's the $500,000 he got. That's why he didn't go to the NBA. But but here's the thing. If we're really being honest about it, what's the Ricky minimum in the NBA? I know for a fact that's over 500K. Let's let's be real now. Let's be – or let me not say that. If he thought that he was going to be a high draft pick, if he thought there's a ton of value to me where I'm going to be top 10. Well, I would would argue – that based on politics and how it goes for UNC basketball players, some people get picked a lot higher than they should based on recency bias. So you 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 play in a national championship game, people are like, okay, he must be all that he says. And there's a lot of UNC guys playing in Serbia right now who were high draft picks. But that that's my point exactly. There's a reason why at the end of the day, we can all agree Baycott is the best player on that team, right? We can all agree that. No, we can not say that. RJ Davis is easily the best person on the team. I I'm gonna tell you this from a, a, a consistency of standpoint and production. I'm sorry, from a standpoint of consistency and production, I don't think that RJ Barrett is up there with Baycott. RJ Davis. RJ Davis is up there with Baycott. Lord Jesus, my, my brain is not working today. I don't think that RJ Davis is up there with Baycott in terms of consistently performing night in, night out, who I can trust. So well, you asked me who the best player on the team was. But that's that to me, that's what goes in the okay. best. Okay. But okay. Okay. One of the better players on the team. We can all agree that yes. he's one of the better when players. You talk about, when you talk about most skill, who probably should be doing the whoop de whoop. But I think RJ is hindered by, you know, some teammates. But you don't have to go there today. The, and, and you know what? Again, <laughs> I, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. People, I, and I'm not going to lie. I was drinking the Kool-Aid a little bit coming into the season. I got caught up in the whirlwind. Too. I got, I'm thinking that UNC was going to be like that? I'm a, I'm a Anita Baker fan. I got caught up in the rapture. It, got, <laughs> it caught me up. It caught me up. And I thought to myself, you know, 
maybe this team is that good. Maybe this team, and they sure yeah. they sure went out there and said, "Ken, don't you ever believe in the boys in baby blue again? Don't you do it? Don't what, you?" Do what it? did that man from the wire say? With a long winded in it, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and so with that being said, we we are looking at a team that at the end of the day, again, they're they've come back down to earth. They've come back down to earth, and we've seen sure. that. Um, and you know, it's always missing Baycott is a a huge, huge, huge loss uh, that they suffered, and and for him to be back in one game and be back balling out, that's what you love to see. And quiet as is kept, as much as we're hyped about North Carolina, the team that's been under the radar, who is the only top 15 team that we have currently, is the Duke Blue Devils. And they beat Mid- Maryland Eastern um, 50, what is it, 82 to 55. And I'm sitting here saying, the fact that we're not even more hype about Duke, I can't tell if we're just like, oh, well, it's not Coach K anymore, so they don't get all the buzz or whatever. But I don't see the same criticism or the same, like, all eyes on deck for the Blue Devils as I did in year one for Davis or just in general for how good this team allegedly is or is not. And that's that's fair. I think that it's fair to say, hey, this team is one and two against top 25 teams. But excuse me. But also, this is a Duke Blue Devil team that we know they, they're they going to have a lot of turnover from year to year. They're going to have really young guys. So it's a slightly different environment. When you look at, when you look at UNC, how many starters did they return from last year? Four. Five. And how many four, starters? Four, because because but did Brady Brady came off the bench technically, right? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. I know and you're how, not that close. And how many starters did Duke return? One, Jeremy that's Roach, my, right? That, but that's my point exactly. That's my point exactly. You know they weren't returning five. You know they, they kicked that kick that boy Joey to the curb. Joey Baker, wherever you're at, big dog. I hope you're exactly. having a good time. Those boys are gone. <laughs> Those boys are gone. Paulo is gone. Mark Williams gone. Those guys are uh, the 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 guard that I thought was about better than everybody said was. Was it Griffin? Is mm-hmm. it AJ. AJ. AJ Griffin gone? Those guys are playing in the NBA. Yeah. So people, of course, people didn't have as high expectations. Uh, for Shire, but even still, they're still performing. They're still yeah. performing. They're still getting some some quality wins against quality teams. And they, again, that uh, it's always going to be tough when you have a three game losing streak as a number one team. It's always going to be tough when you have one of the fastest drops in NCAA history from number one to unranked. So, you know, I mean, listen, I love to say it was something else, but but Huber's gang, they just let them down. Them boys let them down. Yeah, there's a mul- there's a multitude, a myriad of reasons, if you will, of why that went left. But I'm glad Take to Take the ball out of Caleb Love hands. <clears throat> Who said that? Who said that? Who? No, no college basketball guard should shoot 40 times in a game. That boy not can't one. make a good decision with that ball to save his life. You know what? This is not double Caleb Love Day. We are not doing oh, they that. Me hard on this pick and roll. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot a step back. <laughs> I know what to do. Caleb. <laughs> yeah, I digress. I digress. <clears throat> Women held it down. Virginia Tech, North Carolina picking up big wins. Louisville beating Kentucky. Georgia Tech, Duke. NC State picking up that dub against South Florida. Wake Forest and Syracuse. Florida State doing the damn thing. Miami come up just short against Florida. And you say to yourself, at the end of the day, women's hoops is, to me, still the standard here for the ACC. Four teams in the top 15. Yeah. Four of them things. Notre Dame. Uh, UNC, NC State, Virginia Tech. I'm sorry, I got them out of order. Virginia Tech is the second behind Notre Dame, but y'all get my point. These women are balling. It's always something to get excited about because, again, these teams, you know, NC State loses Diamond Johnson uh, for the basically the entire second half of the game. No problem. They yeah. figure it out. Notre Dame goes into uh, Connecticut and what – no problem. They get it done. Olivia Miles is a bucket. They you figure it, it out. Yeah. They, they figure it out. They get it done. Virginia Tech been whooping the wheels off some teams. But I've been looking up like, my Lord, if they don't yeah. do something about that Kinley, she, if they dropped her off in the 50s, she'd get arrested for witchcrafts on that court. <laughs> She's not <laughs> playing around this year. That, and that, these, these teams, and UNC, of course, Banghart can talk her talk, but that team is walking the walk to back and it up. Them freshmen so, is different. Deja is different. Kennedy Ty Williams different. Yeah, they, 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 all of these teams are looking very good, yeah. and you know this is this is going to be a, an exciting time to see. The only team that has let us down so far is Louisville. What happened? We are waiting on they y'all. They beat to Kentucky do- today. Good for them. Good for them. <laughs> we'll give them that. 
But we're waiting on them to join the party because they were supposed true. to be in this party. True. They They're supposed party. to be in the top 10 party for sure. They were supposed to be in the party. And that's we true. know, we that's know true. that they've had some injury. We know, we understand. We, but you know what? That's that's the nature of the beast. Of course, it's not the same as football, but it's the nature of the beast. It's what happens. Is it what you would hope at a place like Louisville, it really could be next man up and they could figure it out. But that, you know, I'm gonna just tell you this. This is uh <laughs> This is a tough time for Louisville basketball. Keep your Louisville friends in your prayers right now. Tease this and peace. This, Got- this, this, this is a tough basketball season so far, but I, I believe in the women to get this thing figured out and right the ship. Now the Definitely men, before the men. The men? Oh, it's it's getting no, a little dicey. Guys, no, but the women. It's, it's a big turnaround. Tomorrow's show will be a transport. Transfer what? Transfer, transfer Tuesday. Transfer Portal Tuesday. Okay, so make sure you come back. We got some transfer news. Top 10 of the best and worst here from this transfer portal around the ACC. We're going to talk about that and all the other ACC football news as we prepare you for what should be a really good ACC bowl season. So we'll have that conversation on tomorrow's show for Candace Cooper and Kenton Gibbs.